On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. Okay, so as always on my channel, I'm using an iPad Pro and the app Procreate. But I don't see any reason why you couldn't use my techniques and process and apply them to a different app on a different tablet. But as such, within Procreate, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. In terms of the color profile, it is the sRGB and with the 2.1 on the end. It's on the list. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. Within the airbrushing, I'm going to use the soft brush and the medium hard brush. I do use them at the default settings, so they're free brushes at the default settings. I'm also going to try using the, with an organic, the rainforest brush for some of the cloud texture. Within the charcoals, I'm gonna use the burnt tree brush, and that will probably do in terms of the brushes. With the colors, I've pre-selected a color palette, and each of these colors has what we call a hexadecimal code linked to it, which you can find in the value section of the colors. You have to type them in one at a time and press enter. The color appears up here, and then you can tap it together yourself. And each of these codes is listed down in the video description. Next to the codes is a link that takes you to my Patreon page, and you can download the whole color file for free over there. And that's also the place that you could support this channel and gain access to exclusive content as well. Such as last week's tutorial here on YouTube, I extended it further over at my Patreon, added extra layers of detail, and just enabled my patrons to just push it that bit further. Again, the link for my Patreon is down in the video description. And with all that said and done, let's get started on this particular piece. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my colors. I'm gonna select the first color on the top row, and I'm gonna drag from this little circle into the canvas and flood fill. And then I'm gonna to switch to the airbrushing, soft brush. I'm gonna go back to my colors, select the second color, I'm not going to change the layer, I may as well stay on the same layer. I'm going to put the brush size up to 40% and 100% opacity. And just for that top section, I'm just going to fill in that whole area. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in to about the 70%. I am then going to go to my layers, click the plus symbol to create a new layer, layer two. I'm going to switch brushes to the organic rainforest brush. I'm going to reset it. I have been using it slightly differently. So now it's back to its default settings. I'm going to go to the third color along, which is quite a dark color. I'm going to have the brush size at 4% and the strength, well, about 70% should do. And I'm just going to bring in some of this color at the very top. I have a sweeping bank of this cloud going all the way across. I'm going to turn the opacity down from 70 to 60. I'm going to turn the brush size up to 6% and I'm just going to do another pass of this. Maybe do it a couple of times like so. And you can see it's slightly different than the one that was above it. Then I'm going to go to this color on the bottom row. It's a new color. I realized I needed an additional color so I've just added it. We're going to stay on the rainforest brush, put it down to 3% size, lower on the opacity now at about 40% and just where the two layers meet. I'll just create some of this color and texture in here. Then I'm going to go to the fourth color on the top row, still on the rainforest brush, 3% size still and 40% opacity still. And I'm just going to create some breakaway textures from this bottom edge. I want it just to fragment slightly here and there. Like so. Then I'm going to take all of that, adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it to about the 8%. Okay, we're going to add another layer, layer three. Still with the rainforest brush, I'm going to continue to use the fourth color initially. I'm going to put it at the 5% size and 70% opacity, just a little bit down from that. Bank of cloud, I'll do another one. Just go over it a few times, maybe turn it down to 3% size, and then I can really just get a bit more specific, add some kind of undulating shapes, just 
make it less uniform. And we can also long press on the eraser. And when we tap on the eraser, we've also got the rainforest brush as that eraser. So with then we can set it down to a similar thing, 3% size, probably 100% opacity for that removal of areas. And we can use that to just thin down some areas of the cloud if we feel like it's gone too far in any areas. Back to the brush settings we had before, and we can just start to bulk it out in some areas if we want. Maybe even turn it down to a lower percentage, so 2%, create some fragmented pieces that just sort of stretch out a little further, break away, starts to split and separate along the edges. Maybe even up here, just tap in a few little anomalous areas. And maybe some more down here too. They can kind of collide and merge together in some areas and that's perfectly fine. We're having just generally. You see, you know, when clouds all gather together, we get this kind of stripe effect and that can work really nicely. But I'm just applying it in more of a tapping motion now. I am going left to right, so it is a tap, but it is also a swiping sort of left to right as well. Maybe just take some areas, bulk them out a little bit more. Again, some more of these little breakaway sections too. Something like this. Then going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in, maybe to about that 8%. I'm then going to go to the layer. I'm going to tap on it and activate, switch on the alpha lock. Then switching to the airbrushing soft brush, I can change colors. So I'm going to go for the fifth color along this time. And with the soft brush set to maybe about 10% size and low on the opacity to around 20%, I can then just start to bring out in these clouds some lighter color. Now it's impossible to add this color anywhere other than the features that are on the layer with alpha lock. So if I just show you this in a really exaggerated way, we can add that color within that cloud, but it doesn't go into the background and it doesn't go into these cloud areas either. It will only be contained within the shapes that are on that layer because of alpha lock. So again, we'll put that back up to the 10% size and 20% opacity. And I'm just gonna take away some of that darkness near the bottom and just bring in some extra light. Just sort of gently softening the darkness of some of these clouds a little bit, especially in this area. This is roughly where the sun is gonna be. So there's definitely gonna be more of the light and the glow in this area. We've got other methods to really ramp that up as well, but that to begin with. Perhaps I'll go back and do the same to layer two. So I'm gonna tap on it, alpha lock, and without changing the brush settings, I can just further bring in some illumination in this center area for those clouds too. I think what I'd like to do is take the top layer, tap on it, merge down, and now all of our cloud details are on one layer. And the reason I'm going to do that is that I feel it's encroaching a little bit too far down into the canvas, not by much, but a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to the transform and I'm just gonna pinch it in. Now you can see because it's on uniform, it's taken it uniformly and kept the proportions and I actually want to distort it. So I'm not gonna use distort, that's too much, but I'm gonna use the free form. And then I can tap any of the blue little circles around the edge and I can just pinch it up squash it a little bit higher into the, the canvas like that. And that's working better. Then I'm going to create a new layer, but I'm going to put it underneath layer two. I'm also going to tap on the little N symbol, which stands for normal on the blend modes. I'm going to scroll down and put it to add, which changes it to a little A. And still with the rainforest brush, set to 2% size, and I'm going to turn it really low at about 15%. And because it's behind the layers that we've, we've already created, it's not going to be destructive at all, but we can just go around the edges and we can just start adding this glow. The sun obviously is behind the clouds and it's just gonna catch the edges and really illuminate them. Now you can probably hear I'm tapping in some of these textures around the edge. I want to continue the idea of little breakaway parts. I use the word fragmenting. Sometimes we, I guess, when we think of fragments, we think of sharper edges. So 
think of them as a little breakaway parts of the texture instead. And I can continue that idea further down too. And then definitely when we get towards the actual sun itself, we're going to have quite a lot of that. So maybe I'll just need to be a little bit more refined with this. So just the lowest part of 2% and just carefully trace around the edges, find wherever that edge is and just keep tapping in more of this effect around that area. Anywhere where there's significant gaps, you're going to get some of this highlight showing through around the edges. I just think it's useful to add this as a layer underneath. It doesn't destroy any of the shapes that you've already created. It just adds to the effect rather than going over it. Not to say we can't create a layer on top of this to actually slightly soften in and go over the top. But I think initially it really works just to do it as a layer underneath. And you can be quite loose in its application. Like I say, it isn't destructive. And obviously it's a separate layer. So if you're not happy with what it's doing, then you can amend and change it and you haven't ruined anything at all. Now, again, I'm just having some, having some more breakaway little sections that maybe you don't need the darker color to surround or to be in the center of it. You can just have some little sections where it's more about just the light. Then I'm going to use the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in slightly, not as much as I have been doing. So maybe about 5% works. Go back up, go to our top layer and click the plus symbol on top. So now we're on layer four and we're above and we can continue to add this too. There's no harm in softening this in. Perhaps we ought to go back to, or we'll go forward actually, we'll go to this color, this really nice orange color and it's still on the low opacity of 15%. So now just around the edge, we can kind of soften in some of this transition from that bright color to the darker tones with this nice orange. And it's subtle, it's not too overpowering, but it's just making a really nice glow along that edge. I'll zoom in a little bit. I try not to zoom in too far. I don't get to the nth degree within the YouTube tutorials. I do push it further over at my Patreon where I do zoom in a little, little bit more, but we're obviously restricted for time within the, the confines of a YouTube video without making it a three hour tutorial. I think in a general zoomed out frame is enough. Perhaps I'll just turn that up to the largest part 2% and turn it down even more. So 10%, I can just soften in some bands that cut across. So this texture within, even the kind of silhouette of the cloud and the shadow of it, we're still gonna get something cutting through so it doesn't appear too flat. We can add this on top over here as well, just quite a few stripes of it. We can even go back to this color, which is almost kind of like a pink. It isn't really pink, it's still within the red orange, but because it's a pastel, it almost has a pink impression. So we can bring some of that in too. It ties it up with the earlier parts that we've already done. Perhaps so you'll see it more at the edges where you're getting less of the glow. You just notice that a little bit more. I'm just gonna tap some more of it up here as well just loosely introducing more and more of this texture. Layers of detail, layers of texture is always a good thing. Okay, I'm gonna go back to layer two with the airbrushing soft brush with this orange color and still at the 10% we had it at and 20% opacity. I'm gonna bring in even more of this light, really bringing it up. Perhaps I could try it with the next color, this really strong orange. And they are strong colors, so I'm pressing lightly. It's at 20% opacity, but obviously if you press on hard, you're gonna get a much more power and impact in there. So I'm just pressing lightly and bringing it in slightly more gradually, I think is better. And again, it's not gonna add it to the gaps between the clouds. It's only adding it to the positive kind of brush marks that we added on that layer. Back again to the yellow, like this. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the top and create a new layer, layer five, and I'm gonna to switch to the airbrushing medium hard brush. Go back to my colors. I'm gonna use the first color on the middle row and I'm gonna set it to, well, 2% size and 100% opacity. And I'm just going to go in there and create some initial shapes. Just try and keep it loose. Try not to let your hand get too kind of rigid and freeze up too much so I'm, I'm deliberately introducing a kind of wobble here and we're just going to create some variations and undulations in the kind of distant mountains 
Now, it's always easy to go to the transform. If you don't like what you've done, you can adjust it to your heart's content, maybe condense it up, and then you can continue some of these shapes if you feel you want to add more. And to fill in the bottom section, all I'm gonna do is drag, so it flood fills that area. And then obviously we can go in and just further refine some of these shapes if you're not entirely happy with it. Seems like it's significantly lower on this side, so I'm gonna balance that up a little bit. Just really refine some of these shapes so that you're happiest. And also long press on the eraser, which means that you've got the medium hard brush now on the eraser. Set it to 100%, whatever the size you think is best, so 2% again, why not? And then we can just, again, just remove some of the shapes until you find the right balance and shapes that you're happiest with. Then going to tap on the layer, turn on alpha lock, go to my brushes, airbrushing, soft brush, and I'm going to go to the, well, I think I'll skip all the way to the fourth color, put it up to, well, 10% size, and low on the opacity at 10%. And we can just introduce some lighter tones in the mix. So at the top of the mountains, it's definitely going to be more subdued with the different colors. We're going to add more of the glow. So that will also have a really big impact, but I'm just going to introduce this sense of a gradient too. Subtle to begin with. I can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in a bit. It only blurs within the kind of outline of the mountains because the alpha lock is on. So I've blurred it up to 20%. Then I'm gonna go back to the first color again, back on the medium hard brush, same settings as before. And we still have the alpha lock on, so again, we can't go outside of the frame. But I think I'm just going to bring some of these features more forward. We've got this lighter tone, so we can help, it can help bring out the separation of the different areas. Perhaps I'll turn it up a little bit, 4% size. Just start to bring in more of a sense of some bits jutting forward and some bits sitting back. We can also bring in more shapes that are nearer to us too. I'm gonna turn the opacity down to 50% and perhaps you can just go in there and create like a another layer of different things that might be layers of different kind of peaks and troughs within even that mountain range. Okay, I'm going to create a layer above and I'm going to tap on that layer and activate, turn on clipping mask, which means it links to the shapes that we have underneath. I'm going to switch to the charcoals burnt tree. I'm going to go for the second color on that middle row and it's 20% size and 30% opacity. I can just very roughly add some of this texture into this area. And I'm going to go to the end symbol on that layer and I'm going to turn the strength of the opacity really quite low to about 40 percent and then when i zoom in you can see it is there and it has an impact but it's quite subtle i just don't want the mountain texture to be completely flat still on the same layer with the burn tree brush i'm going to use the fourth or well, sorry the third color along 20 percent size perhaps i'll need to turn this up to 100 percent and we're just going to get some of this darker texture for these more foreground areas. I'm just going to tap it into just these areas that are closer to us. We're going to get this darker appearance of texture here too. And I'll go in and add more of this more manually. I'm trying to just reserve it for this darker shape. If it encroaches up there a little bit, it doesn't matter. I'm pressing lightly. It can do that a little bit, but not too much. I think that works okay. For that whole layer, I am going to go to the adjustments Gaussian blur and just soften it in a touch. So about 3% will work. Okay, I'm gonna take this layer six, merge down with layer five. So now everything for the mountains is on one layer. I'm gonna create a new layer, layer six. I'm going to activate clipping mask. So I can only add texture to the shapes of the layer underneath, but it is on a separate layer. I'm gonna go in with the medium brush with an airbrushing, sorry, medium hard brush, 2% size, 20% opacity, and I'm just going to start picking out some textures where I want the, the snow to be gathered still on these mountain areas. So I'm gonna zoom in a touch. Now I'm gonna trace along this edge. Now we've got 
a more distant mountain area there that goes behind this section. So any texture I'm adding now will stop when it meets this line. So I can start with texture up here, just add some points of texture. And then as it comes down, maybe it can start to collect into bigger shapes and then it stops when it meets that line. Again, I can start with some little pieces that all just tap in, start to gather together. And then when it meets that line down here, they will just stop like that. And you can just continue to add some of this in. Now, it doesn't need to be completely covered. What I'm thinking is that have maybe a little bit less of it near the peaks anyway, and it's gonna collect a little lower down. So again, smaller pieces as a general, there at the top, and then as it comes down, it collects in the lower sections. So I'm just imagining how it would slide down. So it helps if you actually paint in that direction. So for example, we move over to this section. So some fragmented here, and then just bring your brush further downwards, almost like it's meandering down along the path that the snow might take. Then you can have another one, start lower down, but it meanders down into a lower section, and then it can just gather all together in this lower bit. Again, stopping where it meets this edge, and then just color it in, fill it in a little bit more. I'm gonna turn the strength up actually a little bit more to 40%. We can always go in there with the eraser and soften some of this in if it goes a bit far. So I'm just gonna tap along that edge just to really get an idea where I'm starting with the snow. And then we go upwards this time. So tap along the edge and then we can push some of the texture up too as it kind of meanders up and then fragments. Or you can start at the top, have it kind of go left to right and then collecting near the bottom. A little bit time consuming this kind of texture, but definitely worth doing it. And you can really respond better when you're doing it more manually to the shapes that you've actually created. So you're thinking about the peaks and troughs, so you have to respond to them. So come down, think of the angles. There's a peak, think about sloping downwards in this direction perhaps. And if you get to a certain point and you think it's looking a bit patchy, you can always duplicate it. <clears throat> and the combination of duplicating it will fill in the kind of weak patchy areas of it. So that's not a problem either. I'll just merge that down to merge them together and carry on. So start with being more fragmented. You can always start to bunch it together to fill in and join bits together later on. But if you start more fragmented than not. I think that's the better approach. There's nothing to stop you going long press on the eraser, having said that. 2% size, well, 100% opacity, and just start to remove some sections. At any time, you can just create breaks and gaps in that color too. But I'm gonna start with a brush initially. And like I say, you can just start to merge it together. I'm gonna to put the, tech, the opacity up to 60%. Now I'm feeling a bit more confident about some of it. I can just allow it to push together more strongly. If you're not quite sure about the texture of snow, then maybe get a couple of reference images of mountain ranges and how the snow actually forms and collects. That can be very useful. And keep some sections perhaps where it's a little bit more sparse. It doesn't all have to be at the same level you're going to get some bits where naturally just less snow accumulates and is retained. Other bits where it just holds on to it a little bit more. We're going to move along to the second of these three colours. So it's second from the right. And we're going to continue the same idea, but in this section now. So it's a slightly nearer to set, a little mountain range. And I'm going to respect that top edge. So I'm going to again just start with smaller fragments near the top edge, and then as it comes further down, perhaps we have an accumulation of some of these points of texture too. I'm gonna to turn the brush size up a little bit, just the larger part of 2% initially. Now I'm getting a little bit more confident. I can work in broader strokes initially, and then go with a more refined brush afterwards, and just start to build it in that way. So I'm thinking some bigger shapes down here. And again, I'm gonna go in with the eraser and remove some of this too, and perhaps for this section, Again, I'm going to avoid going beyond that shape. 
I mean, if you do a little bit, it doesn't matter too much, but I'm going to, in a general sense, try and observe that and not go over it. Having said that, there's nothing wrong with using that as a point where some of the snow can be almost following that line and just collecting along that kind of ridge and then some more breakaway bits as it gathers towards the top as well. Now mounting textures, as with a lot of textures when you do by hand, which is why we have a lot of brushes to kind of help us along the way, they are tough. It does take practice, you need to persevere with them. So don't be too disheartened if it first go at this, it, it isn't quite coming together as you would like, as you imagined. If you're comparing it to mine, obviously, you might think that you know yours isn't quite working. And that's natural enough, I think, that it takes time to really build up your confidence. But sometimes you just need to take a step back and really look at it and think, is the overall effect working? And if it is, then you're all good. Sometimes you can be so really involved in what you're doing that you, you can't see it clearly. And that can go either way. You can think it looks great and then you come back to it the next day and you really don't think it looks great. Or likewise, you could see nothing but the, the things you've struggled with, take a step back from it, come back, and actually then you suddenly see the successes of it more, don't you? So it can go either way. But yeah, just some accumulated snow, which is actually the range or behind this ridge in the area back here but it is separate from this area. It has its own top, so we'll do texture up to that point and then stop there. And it's a slightly different hue as well to really help with that point. What I suggest with this kind of texture is just keep your brush moving. Don't become too rigid with it. Don't slow down. You can always just go back in and amend, keep working, keep moving, keep it fluid. I think if you be stiffen up and you really start to think about every single brush mark too much, then you're going to, I don't know, you get lost in what's not working. Whereas if you keep working, keep moving, you can amend it. There's nothing to stop you changing it, but it, at least you're not agonizing over every single brush mark. And sometimes you, you know, you really get something that works and it just falls together without having to spend too long thinking exactly where you're gonna put each mark. So I'm gonna go back to the eraser, like I said I could and just add some gaps in the mix too. So it's a combination between applying and removing. It doesn't have to just be dots, it could be kind of stripes, especially when you get like, you know, you have these kind of textures and you turn it to the side, so you're just glimpsing it more from the side, you're gonna get a collection that almost appears as bands and stripes more like this. So what might be more of a flat, open area front on, when you look at it slightly from the side, becomes an elongated stripe, which is what I'm doing here. Then still on the same layer, I'm gonna to switch to this color on the end, which is more of a blue tone, really cool. And then for this area that's closer to us, perhaps we're just gonna use more of this. It's more in the shadow, it's less impacted by the glow of the sun, which you've not added in yet, obviously. And this is gonna be just more of a shadow, cool, blue. Obviously it's snow, so it's really going to pick up the ambient light. So it's definitely going to be quite bright compared to the contrast we've got here. And you can see I'm not really deliberating over this too much. I'm just creating some shapes, maybe some different blobs here that all sweep in and gather together. So you can have some different sections. Imagine water all pulling together, different channels, and then all meeting in a section here. I'm going to turn it up to, well, the top end of 2%. Maybe put it up to 70% opacity. You find what you're most comfortable with. If you want to start big and then start chiseling away and refining some of the little bits with the eraser, then that's, it could really work as your method. Or if you just want to apply really small textures and let them build up and amass together, then that's something you can do too. So again, I'm just generally respecting the sweeps and the, the movements and imagining how, if it was water, how would it pour down and all the little gaps and crevices on the mountain side is where the, well, it's the snow, but if it was water, it's easier to think of it as water collecting in all the little recesses and just settling there. And how would it work? It would pour down into channels and all meet together. And just imagine the, the direction, the kind of the path of water if it was coming down here. And just try and keep your, your brush marks fluid in that sense too. 
Again, texture is tricky, it takes practice. And this is very texture heavy, so give yourself a chance, stick with it. Again, we've got another little bit where it might sweep up to or down from. So again, think about the directionality from here. And again, comes down here and joins. Doesn't all have to be very clear, it could be more fragmented. Yeah, generally we've got that sweeping movement up to little peaks and then some more fragmented in here too. Just some little points of texture. We're going to get lots of these little points where it starts to thin out, especially in the foreground where you can really see maybe some stretched out sections here, as we did here, but then we get more of a zigzag left to right kind of movement for some of these other textures. And you can see I'm really just haphazardly adding it in. Really don't want to seize up and start to become too rigid with this. I'm just going to merge some of these together, perhaps. Allow them to mass and blend. Again, just scribble in if you want to create some bigger shapes. Now there will come points perhaps where you just want to merge this more foreground element with details back there. And that's absolutely fine to do that too. It's not going to be an absolutely hard edge where one stops and the other one starts. You can just go over this area and merge that color in with the other one a little bit more. Same over here, some points of texture. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to change the N to the add blend mode. I'm going to go in with this yellow, which is fifth from the right on the top row. I'm going to go in with the soft brush and I'm going to have the sun peeking over around this point about here. And I'm going to go to the adjustments, bloom and ramp it up to 100% and it instantly gets that nice glow. But we're not going to stop there by any means. I'm going to switch to the next color and I'm going to turn that up to 10% um, size and 10% opacity. And I'm gonna add that circle in a little bit more in the whole area. So it just softens the edge and softens it in more. And then I'm gonna turn it up to 20%, add it a couple more times, 60%. And it's really gonna add it into the whole scene a little bit more, which is good. I'm gonna switch to this next color, this orange is third in from the right. Same brush, same settings, I do it a little bit more. Move along to the red, and again, just add that in now, and push it a little bit further on either side. I'm going to create a new layer, but I'm gonna put it underneath that layer seven. I'm gonna keep the blend mode to normal. I'm gonna go in with this orange, with the soft brush, 10% size, 10% opacity, and I'm just going to clip off some of the top edge over here. I feel like it needs just some of this removing a little bit more. Add some of this glow. It's kind of coming from the sun, so you can think about adding the stripes from there. I go back and use the yellow, which is fourth. And do the same again, just to soften that in a little bit. Use the direction of the sun to push that either way. I'm gonna turn that down to 3% size and just have the sun pushing some but that's too strong on the opacity. I need to put that down to 5% opacity. Whoops, there you go. Push it this way. Have that encroaching here just a little bit where it creeps over. Push it in every direction. You can even like pushing upwards a little bit. You're not gonna see it too much, but it have a subtle effect. Going to go back to the top layer, create another layer, change the end to the add, the blend mode once more. I'm gonna to go to this white, 2% size, 60% opacity. Just go back where the sun should be. Really bring that out more. It needs to be pure white, obviously. It is the sun, after all. I'm gonna turn the, well, maybe about 10% size. Lower down, 10% opacity. Tap that in a few times just to help bring it out even more. Turn the size up 20%. A couple of taps. I feel like it's really selling that better. I'm gonna turn it also back down to the 2% size. Stay at the 10% and I'm just going to start tapping in for some of these clouds here too. In fact, we'll go to the lowest part of 2%. Let's really be more refined with this. And some of these edges of clouds need to be even brighter than they were. 
So with the white now, we're really bleaching them out. They need to be super glowy, really intense because of the sun. And we can just extend them across left to right and really bring out that extra light and extra glow. Nothing wrong with adding it a little bit further up too. You know, especially in the center area, we have like a channel here that is gonna be really utilizing those bright colors. You can ramp it up to your heart's content really. Until such a point where I think, well, you know, we've pushed it too far. I really like to push things as far as we can without getting unbelievable. Add some little textures down here, perhaps. So in and around the mountain. Again, some up here. I might just go back to that layer. And I think that maybe we just need to reclaim some of the mountain. So we'll go back in with the eraser. I'm gonna set the eraser to soft brush with an airbrushing. 10% strength and just try and reclaim some of that shape here 3% size just reclaim some of that mount in there a little bit more and we had a layer LA8 as well perhaps where it's just clipped it a bit too strong so I just want to get rid of some of that just so we've even within this area here you're getting a really nice contrast I think it will work better back up to layer 7 back with the soft brush Set to this yellow orange. Maybe again, we need to have it low. So 5%, 3% size. I do want to make sure I have some of these sunbeams cutting in front in places, but not, not on this side really. Back to the white. Just bring out more of that sun. I just want to make it touch bigger. I think that works better. Okay, I'm gonna leave this video here at this point. Unless you're watching it on the very day that I've uploaded it, normally the next day I will create a link that takes you to the extended version of this tutorial, and that will be down in the comments section pinned to the very top. So yeah, if you wanna do this in even more detail, you can do that over at my Patreon. Otherwise, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and don't forget the bell notification, and I shall catch you back here very soon. Thanks for watching, see you again.